All right, I'm going to do an introduction to our final project of the semester here. It's exciting. You get to use whatever digital techniques you want, but it has to be based on a shared theme. So if we look at the course outline, we'll see where we are today. And we only have two weeks of classes left, really only a week and a, a, week and a half of classes left. So today you're finishing up your digital painting, making sure it's something submitted for that. And we're starting on what's called assignment eight. I call it a conceptual project. That's because it's based on an idea, but there is no particular digital technique that I require of you. As long as you're using digital art, you can make it in any method that you like. We start it by doing the proving ground number four, which is what I call the concept project workflow. So when, an I, when a project is about your idea, it's good to take your idea seriously. And so I'm going to show you a process for that. And then we want to start our sketches so that we can upload them to Canvas for next class. Because next class is part of the proving ground. I need to critique your different sketch ideas with you to help make your idea stronger. Right? Digital Honors gets to play with animation if they want to as an extra. So next class is Wednesday the 29th. Your proving ground is going to be due by the end of, end of that day. And, but that requires you to be here in order to do individual process critiques with me. Now, if you don't finish your proving ground, it's not the end of the world. It's only one and a half points. But you need to get 100% on all four proving grounds to earn your proving, your, uh, your 21st century skills badge in creative problem solving, right? Also, next class is when the questions of the day are due. So the ones we have left are the question of the day four, and then you have an interim self-assessment under questions of the day. Little things to get due so you can really just focus on our last project. And then, a week from today, on December 4th, yes, December 4th. that is our day for printing our Ooh. final assignment. Is that your birthday, Josh? Yep. Excellent. Happy birthday. So that doesn't give us a lot of time to work on our final project if we're going to print it within class time on December 4th. You can also Ooh. print it after class on December 4th, but it has to be printed before December 6th. Because at the beginning of class on December 6th, all of your final assignments need to be printed and up in the room so that the class can critique them. This, like the midterm critique portfolio, is based on a, a class critique score. And it's out of 10 points. Right? All right. Now, don't ignore your questions of the day. Because they, they add up to quite a few points. But even if you never did question of the day number one, number two, number three, number four, the midterm self-assessment, the interim self-assessment, you can still get credit for all of those if you get them done by November 29th. All right. So let's look at the project. If we go to unit modules, we'll see unit 15. We just finished digital painting. Now we move on to our final project. As part of this, you have your interim self-assessment. Just answering these five questions, no required word length as long as you answer those five questions. After that, we have proving ground number four. This is the skill of creative problem solving, which is called applying an iterative process. Let's go right to the rubric for it, what you'll be judged on. So in order to get full credit for this proving ground, you need to do three things fully. You need to systematically test out different ideas. You're going to do that by creating at least three rough thumbnail sketches to your original concept brief that's going to be interrogated by the instructor in an individual process critique. What does all that mean? We'll talk about it. But it means you need to write your idea out in a brief way, usually just one sentence and then come up with three visual solutions for that as a sketch. 
did you did you challenge your own perceptions? Did you brainstorm and acknowledge the cliches as part of your process and then work beyond them with your thumbnail sketches to create a more personal and engaging solution? So once I've worked with you and we've kind of selected an approach which is strongest for you, then you're going to want to brainstorm, find references to make a better sketch, right? And that's what's going to lead to the last part of the proving ground, expanding the range of potential solutions. Did you use the instructor's process critique and self-interrogation of your rough thumbnails to create an improved, refined sketch solution before deciding your final workflow? So this is an example of what you need to do by next class and in the beginning of next class. You're going to first have to define your problem. So once I give you what the theme of the semester is, you have to come up with your way of making an idea about it. So my concept summary se sentence was this. Collective pain and even disconnection and isol isolation can give the opportunity for insight, self-awareness, and healing. Right? So I wanted to try to show that. That collective pain and even disconnection and isolation can give the opportunity for insight, self-awareness, and healing. Gives me a lot to work with, but that doesn't solve anything visually for me. How can I communicate that idea visually? So I came up with three rough thumbnail sketches. One was of a plug that was bent and being showed unplugged, and the cord was fraying, you know, to represent kind of the struggle. Another was to show disconnection, like a person's face being kind of removed from their, their head with all these little plugs waiting for it. And then my last one was to do the years 2020 and 2021 with a big dirty band-aid over the top of them. And I came in, I would come into the class, next class, with these three and this sentence. Kind of knowing the idea, knowing the ways I was thinking about going about it. Then I would work with the instructor to say, oh, you know what, I'm really focused on this idea. I think it's best. But how can I strengthen it? How can I make it more about disconnection and isolation can give the opportunity for insight, self-awareness, and healing? And with the instructor's critique, instead of having multiple little plugs, we just made it one big outlet. And then we were going to use lighting to show that once it's connected, it can be stronger. So it's almost like a face is like a nightlight on this, this shadowy husk, right? And then you meet with the instructor again just to, to figure out what digital art techniques would be best for actually finishing this project. So would it be a digital painting? Would it be a, a photo composite? Would it be a vector illustration? Would it be a logo? Would it be an animation? You know, all these different things, right? That would finish the proving ground. And then you would move on to your final project where you can use any techniques you want to be critiqued by the full class. Right? And when we do that, we're starting today by working through what I call the concept project workflow. So this is my little flow chart adapted from found resources. The first step, it's even before the first step, is to know what you're asked to do. Right? It's to define the problem. So to do this, you're not going to find it in the unit module. You're going to find it under assignments. Because each semester for each section, I give a different prompt. Something that everyone has to react to. So if you look under assignments and you scroll down past digital painting, you'll start to see some posters here, which I think can work for this theme. But our theme for this class is Apathy's the Enemy. Apathy is the enemy. That's the title of the show. Your work is going to fit within that show, right? But you can have your own title for your own work. So what's funny is apathy is the enemy, even though that wasn't the theme that I did my demo based on, it works pretty well for that disconnected thing I showed you, right? So if you look on assignments, You'll see underneath the theme some examples, lots of examples, and then you'll see proving ground number four, and that's where we start. 
So my examples here, this could work under apathy is the enemy, right? But my title's not apathy is the enemy. My title might have something to do with collective pain and even disconnection and isolation can give the opportunity for insight, self-awareness, and healing. The important thing is to take that theme, apathy is the enemy, and turn that into something you're interested in creating. So apathy is the enemy is just the start. Gets you thinking. You can take it seriously. You can take it ironically. You can be humorous about it. You can be oppositional to it. Like you can make your project about apathy is my best friend. Right? Whatever you want to do. But it would fit within that theme pretty well. Like if I'm going to submit to Sanrio's Hello Kitty art show, I can make I can make a project all about, uh, just to make it memorable, I'll, I'll be gross, but all about like dead cats, right? Yeah. And I could taxiderm a bunch of dead cats together and like sew a stuffed animal out of them. It would still fit in a Hello Kitty art show, right? Because we can push the idea in any direction we want. And remember, it's not graded by me. So you're not trying to come up with an idea you think oh. me as your instructor would like. You're... You're trying to create something that makes an impact on your class because they're your audience for this project. Just like if you're a professional artist, you're trying to create a work, you are making it for a client, the room is the client, right? With all of its diversity. Or if you're a fine artist and you're putting it up in a gallery show, this room is your audience. That's who you want to make an impact to. A strong idea, a strong execution of the idea, a lot of effort put into it, Maybe it has some pizzazz in how you present it, right? The title you choose, and, and that will give you the best, best possible score on your final project. So let's explore apathy is the enemy. If we go back to assignments, I, I make this a link, and it just goes to this page on this site called Dribble, where different professional artists have dealt with the idea of apathy. Some do it very abstractly, right? And this was just done as kind of a pretty clean vector graphic in black and white on cream colored paper. But they label it apathy and they call it wrapping yourself in the void. So that's one approach, right? And they might have had different kind of process critiques for it. Another artist takes it more as like a slogan for a t-shirt almost, and they improve upon it, and they say apathy kills, and then they apply it to something they're interested in. So stop the abduction of African children for war, right? of child soldiers, especially in the Congo and in Nigeria. And then they, 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 make, a, they make a line art illustration they do this all traditionally. They do this with pencil and ink, right? But then they scan it, and then they color it digitally with digital coloring to turn it into a t-shirt graphic, a spot illustration. Right? You don't quite have time, no matter how fast you are, to make a project and then print it on a t-shirt. But you do want to think about what that image is and how you can present it most effectively. I have had students print their work on a cake before for the final project. That's fucking awesome. Yeah. So you just got to get them the file in time, right? <laughs> T-shirts take a little bit longer. All right. So let's look at that theme. Apathy is the enemy. And then let's look at the proving ground a little bit more closely. So you can see lots of different ways that artists have explored it, but you're going to find your own way. You can just make a text solution if you want. You know, this one's kind of interesting. If you really liked type design and vector design, sometimes that can be a finished work. You can make it a photo composite. You can make it a digital painting, like this one. And you're going to have an artist statement to help, help us explain kind of what you were thinking about it, right? I think this one's pretty cool. But all of these are based on an idea. So this project is not based on how well you do one technique. It's based on your point of view and your idea. 
even something as simple as that can be effective. Right. So we're going to do this.